All right, y'all. So in this one, we're going to be talking about something serious when it comes down to the Omi token. So I've been making a few videos on Omi recently, giving you all my thoughts and opinion and sharing with you all bullish cases and why I am. I do believe in the token a little bit more. Now, I've been getting a lot of feedback and backlash of people saying, oh, just give it up. You still believe in this shit coin? Um, it's like, why don't you educate your followers on real money making opportunities, all types of stuff like this. And listen, I'm, I don't, I'm not the type to just sit around and judge people. I don't, I don't care to judge people. I get nothing out of that. It doesn't help me grow as an investor. It doesn't help me grow in business. It, it really is just a waste of my time personally judging anyone. But I'll say this when I was at my extreme peak when it came down to negativity, it was primarily when I was realizing that the team wasn't delivering the things that they were saying they were gonna deliver, they weren't doing what they was gonna do, what they said they were gonna do, and things like that. <clears throat> and the reason that it impacted me so heavily is because I was putting everything on the VV and Nikomi team. I was putting everything on this project. My, my ability to make my first million dollars. I was putting that on this project. My ability to, to get rich and provide for my family in the future and stuff like that. I was putting it all on this project. And in that situation, it's understandable why my frustrations were so high because it's like everything in my life was crashing with Vivi and Ikomi starting to not look so great. Vivi and Ikomi should never have been everything in my life like that was going to you know change things financially forever i should have never put that type of responsibility or that type of expectation on a project like this in the first place because of how risky it is from the beginning and i was educated enough to know it was a risk but i wasn't educated enough or, or wise enough to understand not to put so much expectation on the project. I did, I was not heavily, y'all, you all know, like if you've been here for a while, some years, some of my earlier videos, I was talking about how I was against diversification because when you find that one project and you know it's the one, what you need to diversify for, like if I, if I can invest in McDonald's and I know I'm invested in McDonald's, but then there's Burger King, why would I invest in Burger King? I know I'm invested in McDonald's, so I'm gonna keep investing in McDonald's. It's like, after a, a good amount of years, a good amount, after a good amount of time, it's clear to see which one is McDonald's and which one is Burger King. But as, as they're building, that might not be so clear and easy to see. <clears throat> and things change because the one that's on top looking like it could be McDonald's could end up being Burger King or even worse. And then something unexpected could, could come up and become McDonald's. So... I'm saying this to say I was at my most toxic and most negative because of my own issues within myself. If you feel the need to speak down about people and speak down about the Omi token, the project and things like that all the time for no apparent reason, anytime someone says something positive, you have to attack You're you're hurt. You're hurt, you're, and it's, it's for, maybe you're over leveraged, maybe you're in too deep, maybe your expectations for this project is too high, but you have to mitigate your risk. You have to proper practice, you, you have to practice proper invest, investing strategies because it is important to change with time. Like, I, like when I speak on mitigating risk and things like that, you got so many people who wanna sit here and try to give me shit for it. Like, oh, when I was saying that to you two years ago, blah, 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 it's like, and it's like, I don't really care anything negative someone has to say now. I know how I've grown as an investor and I'm just elevating. I'm focused on me. I'm focused on getting better. I don't need somebody sitting here holding on to what they told me two years ago. That's like, you're probably in the same space. And to be fair, two years ago, you were probably a little bit wiser than me in your approach, but I've caught up to that approach now. And if you haven't been growing and focusing on yourself and you're sitting here judging me and living in your glory days from your glory calls two years ago, then it's gonna be a huge separation in where we go from here because I'm going to continue improving and I'm gonna continue trying to become my best self and the best version of myself that I could possibly be. So it's important that you really sit back and realize why you don't believe in the Omi token. 
Like, yes, the team has been disappointing. Yes, thing, yes, there's a lot of negatives. Yes, there's a lot of sketch things. Over-the-counter deals, there's, there's a lot. Like, we're not on exchanges. We don't have any clear communication on why a lot of the stuff that goes on goes on. We don't have clear understanding. All we have is a bunch of, uh, is a group of guys who didn't know they would be in over their heads with a dream. And now they are learning that that dream is a lot more complication to bring into reality than they at first assumed that it would be, which is fine because they have been dealing the, dealing with these problems and handling these um, problems very well. They, they've been like, they've been doing it very well. Um, not within their timeline. No, not with the, they've been managing it well, but not within their timeline. And at the end of the day, like I said, this is still a risk because their competitors are not going to wait for their timeline. If a com if competitors really want, but what, what's what's crazy is that everybody who's tried to compete with Vivi ends up going down, like Quid, like like um the the other projects that had IP. It's like uh, recur. It's like these projects end up going down. So clearly, Vivi has done and is doing something right. So it's like. I can bring up my my bearish perspective because I'm not delusional to the fact that if Epic Games comes in and decides that they want to do exactly what Vivi is doing, Vivi can't do a damn thing about it. I'm not I'm not oblivious to that fact. But Epic has not done that. And all these other NFT web3 companies who have tried to do what Vivi has done has failed at it. So that's bullish because the Fortnite taking VV spot, that's a what if scenario. That's a what if scenario. That's not anything that's actually happened. It's not something that's guaranteed to ever happen. That's a what if scenario. What is 100% guaranteed when it comes to this project is they have outlast a lot of their competitors. They are still here. They are still standing next to Marvel at these events. So you can say what you want about this project, say what you want about the team. I. Like what you gotta understand is when I speak negative about VV, I'm don't don't if you're a toxic person who's just trashing the project, don't feel as though I'm on your side because I'm pointing out truth. <laughs> I point out truth, like the truth as I understand it. That's what I'm gonna point out. But I'm not just trashing VV for no reason at all. I never do that. I raise my concerns, and that's where I leave it. I am not full on footer. I'm not full on hater anything like that. I love this project. I wanted to see it be successful. And I do notice all the great aspects of this project. I just think that they could be doing more and they should be doing more. And their approach could be better in a lot of different situations. Like so many people just accept the fact that, yo, they, if, if you got a lot of money, you get a lot of perks and they listen to people with a lot of money over just a regular part of their community. And a lot of people are okay and, and are willing to live with that. I think that this is a completely stupid approach because the majority of the people that's going to make up their collective revenue, the biggest chunks of their revenue, isn't going to be these millionaires buying the, these, well, that's, that wasn't what they said they were going for. It isn't going to be these guys making these massive one-off purchases. It's going to be hundreds of millions of people is what they said, all donating between a dollar and $10, or all, or all paying within a dollar and $10. So it's not going to be some big millionaire spending like 50 million or something like that. It's going to be 50 million people spending $1. These, these, that's supposed to be your goal. That, that was what you sold us on. So if that's the case, you should probably be listening to the, the people who are one of those 50 million people and not the anomalies that's going to be the ones spending $50 million. It, it's, it's backwards. Your logic is backwards and it makes no sense. Because the reason that these millionaires is going to be spending fifty million dollars is because it's going to be because of the fifty million people and those people and having a certain status over all those people and having a certain volume and things like that. So at the end of the day, the goal still only makes sense to attract those fifty million people. So that's the example and scenario where why I speak on the things that I speak on because I just think it's completely illogical. Vivi always focusing on whales and things of that nature, because no, that's not where that's not where their focus should be. Their focus should be on the average consumer who's going to be using these products that they're building, who's going to be experiencing these things and enjoying these things that they're building. Not some high end. This is supposed to be for everybody. This is supposed to be about mass adoption. At least that's what I thought it was. That's what we were sold on. If this is some 
super high status pay payment club where you got to be rich. You should have you should have said that. You you definitely should have said that. You should have been transparent about that. But yeah, at the end of the day, I believe that there's a lot of toxicity and negativity because a lot of people are disappointed, hurt, or putting too much on too much expectation on this project, which they should not. You have to diversify. You have to mitigate your risk. You have to put yourself in a position to win. No one else is going to put you in that position. No one else gives a shit about you. Sorry, but I mean, this is life. Wel welcome to the real world. No one gives a shit about you. You have to give enough of a shit about yourself to study, do the research, put in the work, put in those hours, find out what's the best thing for your situation, your scenario. This is why you don't just follow some trader and, and do what someone else tell, like tells you that they're doing. The reason that you don't do that is because what they're doing works for them. It's based around them, their life, and things like that. That same thing may not work for you because you have a different life. You have you need different things. You're trying to get different results. So how are you going to follow someone else when you're trying to get certain results and you're not in the same place? Like you can follow someone's move and it like if you only have a hundred dollars to invest and you follow somebody's move where it's only going to get them a, a, a like a, a what ten percent return or something like that. A 10% return on, on $100 is not even worth the risk for you, if, if especially if that $100 is significant. But a 10% return on them, if they've invested $100 million, that's that's not bad. That's, that's a pretty good return. So it's like you can't just follow people blindly. Like hopefully you get what, I, what, what I'm saying and you understand that if you put yourself in a better position, your mindset and your energy towards things will change. Put yourself in a position that best aligns with your purpose and where where you're trying to go for yourself, for your family, for the people that you care about. Like, and and life changes. Life life becomes a lot more beautiful, and your perspectives and opinion on things become beautiful. Like the reason that I don't have to sit here and cry about everything that goes on with VV and stuff like that is because if it goes up, if it goes down, it I I really don't have to care. I only speak on it because I'm still passionate about the project. I still believe in the project. That's why I speak on it. Otherwise, I would just make content on different topics all the time. But this is still a project that I believe in. It's still, it is still something that I stand behind. I, I'm just, I, I am willing to be patient and just wait and see what happens as opposed to trying to force people to believe what I want them to believe because I'm not seeing the results that I, I want, I expected to see or, or things like that's just weird. That's weird. Um, I'm, I'll wait and see what the results are going to be with this project. I like, it doesn't matter to me. It, I'm not in a position to be damaged by whatever the result is. Like I'm just not. And that, that's because I learned how to mitigate my risk and manage my expectations. And I, I grew as an investor. Everyone can do that. And anyone can. So yeah, I, I recommend that those people still bring in that negativity and toxic energy. You need to, you need to really change some things around. So it's not that, you know, it's not that you're not like this, you know, you don't have to be like this, but anyway, I wish you all the best. Everybody happy investing. Um, be sure to be safe, mitigate your risk. Don't, don't put too much pressure on one of your investments to just change your life. Can one investment change your life? Absolutely. But those stories become historic because of how rare that is. Everyone thinking they're this unicorn walking around, I think that that's a foolish strategy. I would rather have true skill, learn to master that skill, and then get lucky even though I'm skillful. I'd rather get lucky and be skillful as opposed to having no skills and just preying on luck. That's not a that's not the approach that I would take personally, but let me know what you all think. Let me know how you all feel. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.